eyes. Jessica, welcome to the wedding, the hitching post for this couple. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for love and the love that's demonstrated in your son Jesus that's been shed abroad and has been poured out in Jessica and Dustin's life. Father, we dedicate this ceremony into your hands, this holy ceremony that represents you. Father, have your way. Speak to our hearts. Take us deeper in your love and with one another. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Well, although it's warm, the pastor is short. So we'll keep it, we'll keep it that way. We've got a beautiful ceremony planned. We've got uh, a nice reception planned. And we're so glad that you came. Uh, it means a lot to Jessica and Dustin as well to the folks that are joining us online. You can all wave at the camera. <laughs> They've chosen to share a couple readings from scripture that have been meaningful to them in their courtship and in their uh, understanding of what marriage is. They'll begin with a uh, reading from Dustin from Colossians. Colossians 3. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. So put to death the sinful, earthly things working within you. Have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still part of the world. But now is the time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked, de wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free. Christ is all that matters, and he lives in all of us. Since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender heart and mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes with Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Let the message about Christ and all richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. They've also asked David's, uh, Dustin's father, David, to share from Song of Solomon and from Ephesians 4. First of all, Ephesians 4. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. In Song of Solomon, 
my lover said to me, rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. Look, the winter is past, and the rains are over and gone. The flowers are springing up. The season of singing birds has come, and the cooing of turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. My dove is hiding behind the rocks, behind an outcrop on the cliff. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is pleasant, and your face is lovely. My lover is mine, and I am his. He browses among the lilies. And finally, one uh, reading from Carlos, Jessica's son, from 1 John. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. All right, thank you. So, Jessica, you picked a good guy. A good guy. A faithful guy. And Dustin, you picked a great gal. You, you better know. <laughs> you better remember that, always. Some great verses. Some great verses that you chose that represent Christ in the church. Some verses that are actually very uh, romantic um, from um, Song of Solomon. Uh, I, Song of Solomon is... is um, it's an interesting passage. We've got some minors in the room, so I can't say a lot about it. But uh, it literally was not, uh, in some Jewish traditions, they were not allowed to read it until age 30, to give you an idea that the um, poetry was sensual in points, and, uh, and you skipped those points. You're saving those for later, I guess. But <laughs> Song of Solomon 2, you said, My lover said to me, Rise up, my darling. Come away with me, my fair one. The flowers are springing up, the season of singing birds has come, and the cooing of turtle doves fills the air. The fig trees are forming young fruit, and the fragrant grapevines are blossoming. Rise up, my darling, come away with me, my fair one. And that beautiful love that you have right now, this excitement to be together and to, to come away, is beautiful. And God intends that that love, that excitement, continue. Yet, how many of you are married out there? And keeping those hands raised, how many of you would say that that love and that excitement stayed forever? <laughs> yeah, the pastor's wife did, and she's, she's being nice because she knows I've got the microphone, and she doesn't want to be embarrassed. Um, but it doesn't stay. It's our job, it's your job as the groom, it's your job as the bride to continue to, to do that, to feed that love, to build that love. And, and other verses that you quoted were also from the Ephesians. And, um, and God is building a spiritual house, the new Opria house, um, the grand old Opria. And uh, <laughs> that house is a spiritual house, and it's, it's builder and architect is God. And yet, it's up to you two how you build it. And how you build it is on experiences. It's built on actions. And your actions will either build it stronger or because of broken promises, disappointments, frustration, anger. Instead of building a foundation, you begin to build walls. I was reading today, uh, somebody sent me an a, a, a email that's saying divorce is up 34% since COVID. And so we live in challenging times. So you have, you've accepted this in our premarital council, we've talked about it, but you guys have, set, have accepted that challenge. And the reality is life is gonna kick in and try to challenge and test that resolve, to test the promises that you're gonna be making, the vows that you're gonna be making. You can't do it in your own strength. But with his strength, you can. And the verses that, um, part of what you said is uh, Ephesians 4, instead be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ has forgiven you. If you continue to focus on that forgiveness towards one another, it will grow. Your love will grow, your foundation will get stronger. But if you're focused on, he did it again. He's late again. I can never please her. She's not, you know, and all those little things, the, they do, they build up. And so um, later in that chapter, actually early in that chapter, Ephesians 4.26 says, Do not sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. And sometimes we, well, I'm not angry. 
I'm not angry. Obviously. And yet, you can tell there's something going on, and it's it's your job for each of you to kind of keep short accounts. Um, love is patient, love is kind. You know the verse from 1 Corinthians 13. But at the end it says, love hopes all things, believes all things, endures all things. And so it's hoping the best. When he doesn't fulfill his promise, hoping that, you know what, and trusting that God is still at work in him. He's not perfect. You know that. But you're going to find out more. And the same thing. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. Your job, Ephesians 5 says, that she is the, um, it's a picture of Christ in the church. Husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. And that's supposed to be a picture of Christ in the church. And so just as she's gorgeous today, your job is to present her to Jesus, spiritually gorgeous, spiritually growing in Christ's likeness. That's your job. That's a huge job. And there's no way you can do it. If you think that you can, we need to do the premarital again. Okay? Because there's no way. No way that any of us can. We need Christ's help. We need Christ's help to forgive. We need Christ's help to love. We need Christ's help to not try to play Holy Spirit. And try to... It's a, it's a big charge to present her with any spot, without any spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And yet, if you try to play Holy Spirit, you just frustrate her. Your job is to love her. Love her as Christ in the church. So, what do we do from here? Well, that picture of Christ in the church, it's hard. Submission is hard. Submitting to Christ, following Christ. Every single one of us is called into relationship. Every single one of us is called, not just necessarily into a relationship with a husband or wife, but into a relationship with Jesus Christ. He died for each and every one of you. He paid the ultimate price. In Jewish times, they would have a dowry that would be paid as evidence of commitment. But Jesus paid the dowry, and the dowry was his life. And he did it because he loved you so much. There was no way that you could pay for your sin. So Jesus died in your place. That's part of what Jessica and Dustin believe. That's part of what's the foundation of their faith. That's part of the foundation of their marriage. As long as the gospel stays the central part, you can do anything. You can overcome the odds. The statistics, you don't need to be a statistic, except one of those that lasted, a marriage that lasted. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word that is a light to our path. We thank you for your word that instructs us and shows us. We thank you for your word that reveals what love is, that you died for us. Help Dustin to lay down his life for his bride. And help Jessica to trust you more and more in all that you called her to and all that you called him to. May their life represent you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. One of the big things at these weddings is a vow. And Jessica and Dustin have chosen to write their own. And they've sealed them tightly so that I couldn't even see them. Thanks for coming to the wedding. Um, gorgeous, huh? Uh, I met Jessica online, and our, <laughs> and our our first date started at a Whole Foods to buy stuff for a picnic, diverted to a chandelier gallery next door that sounded interesting, and ended up at the Fairchild Gardens, where we had a picnic under a massive prehistoric type tree. Um, since then, we've gone on endless numbers of trips. We've had countless adventures. We've traveled the open road in multiple states and multiple countries. We've laughed many, many times together. We've had many quiet weekends while I've just worked and she's just frittered around. We're imperfect, but we've done our best. The Lord has been behind us and before us. Uh, we've enjoyed our time dating. We've been fortunate to have few problems until now. Nothing heartbreaking yet, nothing devastating yet. Those times are coming and we'll deal with them as a team. We'll fall as a team, we'll grow as a team. I can't wait for the victories. I can't wait to look back on them with her. That's why I'm marrying her. I look forward to have a rich and blessed history with her, to give her a part of myself and to know her better than I've ever known anyone else. 
We're worth the struggles that will cause each other. We'll build stronger every time with the Lord's help. I promise to be someone who's committed to learning about you. How, oh, I'm sorry, what you need and how to love you. I promise to spend our marriage trying to make you feel appreciated and loved and learning how to properly honor you in front of others. I promise to dedicate my life to the integrity of our marriage. I'll apologize when I let anything else get in the way of any of these things. In Jesus' name, I love you. chosen to signify this uh, union with rings. The rings that they hold are made of precious metals because the promises that they make to one another are precious and valuable. The rings are also a circle, and a circle really has no end, it continues. And their marriage is continuing forever until death do us part. As well, one of the things about a ring is a ring has two sides, an inside and an outside. The key for your marriage is to keep the two of you on the inside with Jesus. And it's the two of you in your marriage. Genesis 2 tells us to leave and cleave. Parents don't get to come inside that wedding, uh, in, inside that marriage. Kids don't come inside that marriage. Uh, family, other family members, job doesn't come inside that marriage. It's just the two of you and Jesus in that, in that circle, that inner circle. Yes, the family extends. Yes, kids, other um, Carlos and other kids will extend that family, but the two of you need to be the priority. Only you two in that inner circle. All right. Lord God, we just ask that you would bless these rings, that they'd be a constant reminder of their love for one another and your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Dustin, repeat after me.
with this ring given to you. I'll say it to you. <laughs> with this ring given to you. It's a token of my love. It's a token of my love. I seal my vows. I seal my vows. And all my earthly possessions. And all my earthly possessions. Earthly possessions. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Yes, we have to meet with this ring. With this ring. Give it to you. Give it to you. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. I seal my vows. I seal my vows. And with all my earthly possessions. And with all my earthly possessions. I give to you. I give to you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. The Son. The Son. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. What they've done is making a covenant one to another. The state of Florida also has a way of doing that and ratifying that. And they've chosen to publicly sign, well, they've already signed, but for the witnesses to come forward and uh, Diego and Viviana to sign the marriage certificate. Okay, paperwork's done. I think that's it, right? <laughs> Good night. Have a great meal. Oh, you want something else? No, no. Oh, you, oh they can go? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dustin and Jessica, by the power vested in me, from the state of Florida, and more importantly, by the word of God and by Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Before they have a grand exit, I want to thank you all for coming and for this event. We ask that you sign the guest book um, in the back, or the picture. Actually, it's a picture that they'd like you to sign, and you could write a, a word or a verse or whatever. Um, also, if you'll wait here after they process, um, we'll have some uh, refreshments in and the meal here inside um, in the patio. And but we appreciate you all coming. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for Jessica and Dustin. And we thank you, Lord, that you're doing a great work, a new work with this couple, a new family in Christ Jesus. Help them to follow you, to trust you, to walk in your ways. May they not lean on their own understanding, but trust you and acknowledge that you are in control. May they lean and trust in the Holy Spirit to guide their love for one another, and may it grow deeper and deeper day by day. In Jesus' name, amen. May I be the first to introduce Mr. and Mrs. Opriah.